she can do more she can do more and you tell yourself i can do more i like to tell azine and the um conveners the team that put this together i mean azine knows i'm totally humbled azine and team well done well done she can is here to stay and i believe that she can is one of the ways that we as nigerians need to respond to the environment we could sit down and say 10 things 100 things that the government is not doing right a lot of things people could sit down and when you talk of nigeria people will breathe a heavy they will, and then they will start of why this didn't happen and why that didn't happen and it's easier to point fingers but she can is not pointing fingers they are taking action and that is the difference as Nigerians and Africans, we need to arise and stop pointing fingers. We stop saying why it's not going to work. Stop blaming the environment. Indeed, there are very logical and realistic reasons why things don't work here or are not working. But instead of looking at the negativity, we can actually do more. And I believe that's one of the things that um, she can is promoting. When she says she can do more, it means in spite of the fact that we are Africans, we are Nigerians, we are female, but we are also in what is called the underdeveloped country. They call us third world. But it doesn't matter what people call you. What matters is what you call yourself. And I believe that and when we live here today, we will have rebranded the way we perceive ourselves, not just as women, because really it's just the gender, but as Nigerians, and I'm sure most of us here as Afri are Africans, as Africans, we must arise and take action. So Azine and team again, thank you and well done. Um, just... I'll go in, okay, I have a few things to say. I was asked to speak about today's woman and her ability to do more in the digital world. So um, I'll talk a bit about it from an academic perspective and then I'll try to make it practical. I'll definitely make it practical. So digital world, when we talk of the digital world, there's a lot of hype. You know, this is the day of the internet. I graduated in 2002. And to research for my project, I had to, tr I, I schooled in Benin, Uniben. I had to go to Port Harcourt, Shell, Port Harcourt. My cousin worked in Shell to browse the internet. Every time I'd seen, I, and when, I remember I had to go to Port Harcourt from Benin five hours, went, got there. He downloaded four pages of the, on the internet for me, and that was it. That was the research, and that was all. I entered. The, the taxi or the Edo line back to Benin. That was the access to the internet I had at that time. When I tell people that, you know, once my children asked me, mommy, when did you get a smartphone? Were you 10 years old? I said, there was no smart. I said, no, I didn't have a smartphone. I, was I told him I, I got my first phone when I was 24. And he said, why? You were not doing your homework. Your parents were not happy with you. I said, there was no phone. There was no, there was landline. There was, in fact, when, once I showed my son a picture of the landline, that one that dials, da, 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 my son said, what's this? I said, it's a phone. He said, how can this be a phone? Ah, mommy, I beg, please, this can't be a phone. So I'm just trying to say, the generation today, when we talk of the digital world, it's totally, totally different from everything that existed before. We are at a time where information comes to us by the second. The speed, you just sit down while some of the speakers, amazing speakers, I want to salute every speaker that spoke before me. Dr. Abolarinwa, I got it right. Totally, I was so inspired. I respect doctors, personally, I do. And when the second doctor spoke, I knew he was going to say, don't eat meat. I was saying, gosh, you know, but that's another thing. But I want to salute all the speakers that spoke before me. Um, so going back to the issue of digital world. So we are at a place, it's really a digital world where information is at your fingertips. And now they call us again the third world country. But I know that 
in Lagos today, you have 4G on a lot of mobile phones. I know that in, the, in Asia, they're already using 5G and all that. So 4G is already getting old. But we have access to the internet. And what does that mean? You could be sitting down and hear a word. Immediately, you go on Google, which didn't exist about 20 years ago. No. You go on Google, and you check, and you get the information. That is the power of the digital world. We're talking about learning skills. Then, when you want to learn a skill, you get up and you go to a school or you go to someone that will teach you. Now, you don't need to go too far. Go to YouTube, find Google or say, oh, how to make banga soup. Because, I mean, last month, my son, I like banga soup. I don't eat banga soup. My husband does not eat banga soup, so I never make it. But my son kept on going. I just Googled and I made the most amazing banga soup. And you would think, oh, my mom is a robo. She's not. Google is my friend. And that is the power of the digital world. Now, what does it mean? It means information is here. It has come. And we are seeing just that we, we are, I mean, we are definitely behind in the world because of where we are. But that also, but that notwithstanding, the opportunities we are already seeing in Nigeria are enormous. So when we talk of a woman in the digital world, we talk of digital literacy, which is actually the ability to use information technology to evaluate, create, and share knowledge. It's about everyday interaction, about making the information that interacting with information that is available and then relating it to your lives. That is what e-skills or what digital literacy is about. Now, today's economy is dominated by access to information, like I said. Now, the digital world has huge opportunities, how, and that is so huge that um, wh when the World Bank came together about um, in 2015, and they formed the SDGs, right, the um, Strategic Development Goals, number four is quality education for all. And number five is gender equality. Now, I believe it's not a mistake that number four and number five follow each other. D d equal education or quality education for all is saying everybody in the world should have access to good information. But number five is saying, and at the same time, we must not encourage a bias on the basis of gender. So I'm bringing it at home a bit now. We are women. And we know that there is definitely a gender bias in the world, spoken or unspoken. So when you talk about education, and then you bring about gender bias, and you bring them together, definitely anywhere, even in the US, they will tell you in ICT jobs, women turn up less. In Asia, ICT jobs, technology jobs, women turn up less. I studied electrical electronics engineering in Uniben, where 150 in my class were four girls out of 150. Just four of us, and three of us graduated. One of us fell ill, where we had to become close because we're just four, and that was how it was. Nobody expected to see your name on the scholar list. I used to have A's then, but I used to have a lot of D's because I wouldn't sit for my courses that were not interesting to me, which was the height of indiscipline. However, when I got to final year, and I realized that I had a tutu staring me in my face, and my father, who is a professor of chemistry, had said, you can, my father doesn't have a problem. At the age of 13, if you want to go for a party, go. But don't bring tutu to my house. The only thing I asked, that's my, it was clear. So I knew I could not go home with a tutu. So I sat down, and I disciplined myself, which is something I'm going to talk about from year four. I learned the courses, whether I liked them or not, and I graduated second best in my class. It was so bad that when the names came out, because of course they publish your names with matriculation number. Nobody had ever seen my matric number on top. So they now said, oh, who's matric number? And I said, ah, it's the girl, oh. They were shocked. They didn't expect a girl to do so well in the midst of so many men. What I'm trying to say is this issue of gender bias is real, but it does not matter. It is how you address it. It is how you let it address you. It's how you respond to it. So going back to what I was saying, in America, which is meant to be, oh, they are developed, 
it still has records to show that women are a minority in ICT jobs. And so, of course, in this side of the world, where we have bigger issues with gender bias, where we have cultures that deliberately call out the fact that a woman is made for the kitchen, we may not have so much of that in the south of Nigeria, but we have that a lot in the north. And because we are one Nigeria, it is still our problem. Because those issues still exist, you can imagine that we have a bigger divide. But I would like to ask a question. Even though we, there is the bias out there, when you are filling your jam form, there is nothing stopping a girl from saying, I want to read engineering, I want to read ICT. When you are selecting subjects in secondary school, no one told you you could not read chemistry. So what am I saying? If you want to do it as a woman, if you want to get people say, oh, women in the technology world, and I'm skewing my conversation this morning towards that because that was what I was asked to speak on, women in the digital world. Why are women intimidated? Why are they not showing up? Or are they, are they not meant to show up? Why do people feel when they see, like Dr. Abola said, people just say, oh, Doc, this medicine, this specialization is a man's role. But she went in there and she defied the odds. Because you know what? Bias bows in the face of competence. Bias bows in the face of determination. When you are determined and you want to do it, nobody's going to stop you. It doesn't matter the gender bias at that juncture. Your scholarship will come. They will look for you. I remember when I applied for my MBA and I wrote GMAT. And of course, GMAT scores are published internationally. And of course, Africans' average is, was then was about 560, 580. If you are very good, 650. I wrote GMAT, I did all night the day before, because I had TOEFL on the same day, and immediately you finish, your score comes out, immediately you press submit. I submitted, I had 710. I got admission into Oxford, into Cambridge. Cambridge told me, you are the only African resident in Africa that passed our, our, our GMAT cutoff. There were other Africans in my class. There were Nigerians that lived in America. You know, there was Osita that was born and bred in the US. But they said, you are the only African resident in Africa, schooled in Africa that passed, not in Nigeria, Africa. But at that juncture, it didn't matter because competence was manifested. So just to say, this thing called gender bias is a mirage. You can break that glass ceiling, is what it is. It's glass, it can shatter. It is you that can cause it to shatter. It is your attitude and your disposition. It is your determination and the discipline you put into yourself that matters. So that said, even though a lot of, as I said, I'm going back to the academic part now, the World Bank is pushing gender equality. Why do we still have this great divide? We still have this great divide because I genuinely believe that there are other practical things governments must do, but I also believe that there are things individuals must do. Talking about government first. There are certain things around inclusive education systems. I believe technology is not an end in itself, it's a means to an end. You can say, oh, I, I write excellent software. For example, I work at InSwitch. I remember when we started the company in 2002, we didn't want to just build technology. We wanted to build technology that solves problems. Then the problem was people go to the bank and queue for hours. I think I said this here last year. When you upset my mom, she will say you are going to the bank tomorrow. And you know it is over because from 8 o'clock you collect your tally number and you are there till 4. You know, then maybe by the time you buy Coke for the gate man and you greet the kasha very well, they will answer you. So when my mother says you are going to the bank, your day is gone. That was the solu problem we're trying to solve. So in other words, technology is supposed to solve problems. So as a woman, we are natural problem solvers. 
It is a woman that will see a child and she will know, okay, uh, or maybe she has an issue with finance. Women naturally will know, okay, instead of spending all the money to buy this food, I'm going to buy breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they find a way to tweak it. A woman will take 500 naira to the market, she will cook soup, she will do this, she will do that. The children will eat, she will still have change to buy credits. That is the way we are. We solve problems naturally. So technology should naturally be something a woman is drawn to. Not because she wants to just give herself a name and say, I'm in a tech field, but because she wants to solve problems. I genuinely believe that technology is that enabler that will bridge the gap, and it's already doing that, between the, whether they call it first, second, and third world. I believe that technology will place us on the map where we need to be. So as a woman, we should not run away from technology. It shouldn't intimidate us. I believe that there's a segment today she can code that Azine said, okay, I'm going to anchor. Well, I'll get the full details. But I think what she can is trying to say, which she can med, she can fly, she can med, she can code, she can do more. It's just saying those fields that naturally intimidate you, don't be intimidated. All it takes is focus. All it takes is determination. And of course, you must have the right support structure. So I'll talk about that a bit, making this a bit practical. So now, being, when I talk about having a support structure, I would like to say as a lady, a reason why a lot of women do not get to that pinnacle of their careers, of their lives, is because a lot of us, we don't have a plan. Rather, a plan is handed out to us. We study a course that our parents wanted us to study. I'm not here to preach parents' rebellion, but I'm here to say if you have a focus and your parents see it, I know and I believe that they will support that dream. However, in case you entered a course that was not really your interest. First of all, I believe you must graduate. Dr. Abolanyuwa mentioned that again today. People say, oh, Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of Harvard. Do you know what it takes to get into Harvard? Do you understand? And he's dropping out, go and check it. He dropped out, he did not start sleeping. He dropped out and he was working double hard. And they are different, you cannot take solution in planet A and stick it in planet B. There is something about graduating. It shows determination. It shows the ability to stick to it. It shows the ability to stay. She mentioned her classmates, the doctor that spoke again, that were not practicing medicine but had graduated. Graduating is a discipline. And I'm saying that specifically because there's a lot of dropping out going on. And it has to do with this millennial syndrome. Nobody should tell me who I am. I know who I am. I'm, 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 I'm self-discovered. I'm this. And it seems funky. But I will tell you it is the highest order of indiscipline. That you enter the university and you do not finish. And your excuse is I did not like the course. Who cares? Who cares? Finish it. When you finish, in the night, do the course you like. When you have on holi during holiday, do the course you like. Let me tell you, life is not all about what you want. It's about what you make it. And I say this a lot. I see NYSE coming to my office to do internship. And that is another thing about having a plan for your career. You want to do something. So you try to study the course you want to. But even if you do not have the advantage, maybe you didn't pass jam, 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 do whatever. But now you are in school. Finish whatever course you are doing, but because of technology, you are not limited. You can actually be focused on something else. Now, again, remember, if it's medicine, you may not be able to do that, but a lot of courses give you that leeway to be able to learn something else while you are in school. But anyhow, as a student, as a lady, you do graduate, and now you are saying a job. People say there is no job in Nigeria. I know that the amount of available jobs is a lot less than the people, but the truth is, I know also that value does not hide. And value is never rejected. Have a plan. Have a plan. The um, MD of Asharami, I'm sorry, my missed your name. She mentioned how she went into a place and she offered her services for free. She mentioned that. And that shows that value is never rejected indeed. So as a lady, when you bring value into a place which you can easily gain from the discipline you've put into yourself, from the skills that you have learned, and you bring them in, nobody will reject you. Remember what I said, even if people are biased against you, against your gender, 
once you show competence, buyers must bow. Another thing is when they talk of having a plan, marriage is something you must speak about. We're talking to women. A few more minutes. Just five more. Marriage is something we must talk about because in Nigeria, in Africa, people, ah, marriage, you must marry, it's good. I've been married for 14 years and I thank God. My husband is a great guy. God will bless him. He will succeed where he is and anywhere he is. Amen. Now, what am I saying? Relationship is for conversation. It's not for copulation. It's not for sex. A lot of young girls, first relationship, bah! They are sleeping with a man. How can you have intelligent conversation? You have, that relationship is dead on arrival. Dead. It is during relationship you say, eh hey, talk to me. Um, what's your vision for your wife? A guy told his fiance, you know, my mom was always at home. When the school bus brings me, she picks me, she makes food. That is my vision for my wife. Immediately, your career is in the back door. If that is his vision, it is not a bad vision. But does it make sure your visions align? No need to start praying and binding. Then you now come for marriage counseling. I'm a pastor's wife. The issues people bring up say, but did you not discuss it? They will say, no. What were you talking about? What were you doing? You didn't discuss this vital issue. Uh, so you must have a plan. And your plan, God helping you, your partner will align. If you know the plan, you cannot know everything to the end, but you have the basics. Oh, this is what I'm, inter I'm interested in a master's at some point. I would like to continue. I would like to have a business, but his dream is to have a wife that is a teacher, which is a great thing. My dad is a teacher, but I'm just trying to say plans must align. And if you enter a relationship, the wrong relationship, or a relationship that is outside the plan of your career or your business, that career or business has almost zero percent of success and a lot of stress in women's lives today is born out of this in my marriage my husband has been so supportive i went for my masters he stayed with the children i came back he's my hr advisor i'm having challenges in my office now i show him my organogram he will give me his advice in the best way he can because he's an engineer he is supportive and i thank god for that but the truth is some things some checks have to happen before you enter the marriage if you want that relationship relationship to be sustained. My last point is this, stick to it. A lot of young people give up too easily. And it's not just women, guys as well. But I, women, we give up. Oh, this job is not well paying. You, are, you just finished NYSC. They are offering you 10K, 20K. Oh, I can't. You walk away. You didn't know that, that inside that 10K, in Interswitch when we started, I have swept the floor because we didn't have cleaners. I swept the floor. It didn't reduce me, but I did it. I remember I was living in Maryland. I was coming to VI. My salary was 15,000 Naira. That was my first. That was as a copper. And I was paying. That's when I became wise to discover Amala on Injolaemi. I knew I could not afford TFC at that point. But today I can afford it. Stick to it. A lot of people give up. They walk out. It's not working. I'm giving up. And they walk out. And then they want to try another business in the next six months. After six months, they give up. You cannot build that way. And a lot of young girls are taking that giving up into marriage. Divorce is on the high. And they think it's funky. They post it on Instagram. Shame on you. You can work it out. You can work it out. So um, that's the conclusion of this matter. That as a woman, gender bias is nothing but a mirage. It is the way you approach it that it will affect you. Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 you can. It's time for her to take a stand. She can do more. She can do anything.